Hello there, you're watching Breaking Views on NDTV. I'm Maha Siddiqui. Today has been a day of great tragedy for Chhattisgarh and for the country as well. Ten policemen and a driver in Chhattisgarh lost their lives in a dastardly Maoist attack. This attack took place in Dantewara, a place that is Maoist infested and the shots that came in afterwards were much, were, were, spoke a thousand words rather and we'll tell you exactly why. First of all, it spoke about the intensity of the blast itself and here's the big crater that you can see there on your screens. This crater is the result of the impact of the explosion. 50 kgs of explosive device was used in this attack that killed 10 policemen and a driver. Meanwhile, this is an attack that is taking place at a time when it was believed that the Maoists are on the back foot. What message are they sending then with this dastardly attack in a year that Chhattisgarh will see elections? That's our first discussion this evening. The second topic of discussion is with regards to false or misleading ads and whether there should be a clampdown on them, especially when they are related to products that are consumed by children. The point here is the issue of uh, the huge row now surrounding Bonvita. The National Child Rights Body has written to the manufacturer demanding a reply on the allegations that the chocolate flavored powder which is consumed by millions of children in the country is one that has uh, sugar which is in excess. These are our two topics of discussion this evening. But we are going across first to the main topic, that of the attack in Dantewara in Chhattisgarh. The Maoists targeted a group of policemen who were returning from an anti-Naxal operation. Let me go across to our guests, uh, Professor Vikram Singh, former DGP, Uttar Pradesh, uh, PK Mishra, additional DGP, uh, BSF, retired, and Alok Lal, former DGP, Uttarakhand. PK Mishra, I want to come first to you. With yeah. the details, sir, that we have with us, which shows that about 50 kgs of explosives were used by the Maoists to blow up that car in which uh, 10 policemen and the driver lost their life. What does it show us about the firepower that the Maoists still have, even though there are claims made that their uh, uh, area of activity and the intensity with which they used to attack earlier has reduced? Uh, definitely, uh, what you have spoken that uh, their intensity has reduced and their area of operation has reduced. But I have I have seen the visual of the site and the crater which has been formed on the road, and I can well assume that it's about definitely thirty to fifty kgs of uh, explosives were used. Such a big blast was there where. The vehicle, the parts of the vehicle and the people, they were fragmented and they were thrown up, up, about 50 meters away. It's a very big blast. And uh, and the election is just one month away from uh, uh, in, in uh, Chhattisgarh. And if I can well tell you that, uh, yes, why why they are, they want only in Chhattisgarh? Why they, they want to strike at Chhattisgarh? Because you see, Chattis, if somebody has gone to Chhattisgarh, um, somebody has gone to Bastar, it's very difficult. It's a big forest. It's very difficult to operate inside Bastar like that of Odisha and other areas in Dandakaryan. If somebody has gone inside Dandakaryan, it will be known that even one core of army cannot control Dandakaryan. One core, I am telling you, forget about division. So it is very difficult. Uh, and those are, those are dominated by tribals. They have their problems. And since long, See, from 1947, Naxalites were there and they were they were overpowering them. And they, and now we are penetrating to their areas. The communication is definitely better, whether it is Naranpur or Sukma or Bastar or the Bijapur. Okay. Everywhere the development is taking place. But why it is happening at Sukma? Why at Chittagupa? Why at Kanker? Why at Dantiwada? Why at Bijapur? Hmm. More. Why not in Andhra and Telangana and in Odisha? Hmm. Because, they, see, first of all, training. You, can, you cannot always depend upon central armed police forces. 
you have to train your own police forces and your own irb battalions but so in this the, case it was the drg the district yes, reserve yes, guard I, who were in it. fact carrying out that anti naxal operation and were returning alok yes. lal just a second sir alok lal could it possibly have been a trap and one point that i want you to weigh in on how were the cops identified when they were traveling in civilian vehicles See, it's a matter of uh, intelligence available with our opponents. I think they must have been tipped off about the people who were traveling in these five or six vans, which were civilian all right, but the information might have trickled down to the levels where this operation took place. You can see that the crater has been formed on the main road, which has apparently been recently laid, up, laid down. But the the top soil, uh, the top uh, surface looks new. To my mind, the people who were responsible for laying down the road, they are also having somebody amongst them who might have placed this IED there. This is just a possibility. As for how they identified that there will be policemen in these vehicles, I think it's a job. done by some intelligence uh, that they gathered from the locals hmm. because as you know the drg is a local force That's it's right. made up of the local uh, people only hmm. so maybe there was some leakage somewhere hmm. dr vikram singh chatisgarh as we've pointed out will have elections later this year for the maoists who don't believe in the ballot could this also be an attempt to create fear ahead of the democratic process in the state later this year possibly after a lucid interval they have been found active now this is perhaps to signal their presence and also intimidate the voters and also the law enforcement machinery but this doesn't work elections will have reinforcements not only from the local police also from the paramilitary forces and other specialized law enforcement agencies so their game plan is over in any case this in any case is a very desperate attempt to signify the presence there but whatever they may have done they may have laid down the mines you may recall that surat bhan who was a naxalite operating in bihar and uttar pradesh also was an expert in what is known as the balti bomb packets full of explosives and dug and planted at strategic places so that even a child could uh, explode them when it was required but yes this is an alarm bell a signal for extreme alertness and caution at the highest level hmm. pk mishra how difficult is it to conduct uh, elections in these areas Yes, I can well tell you it was difficult. Um, I can go back to 1996 when even government of India or government of Jammu and Kashmir could not hold election inside Dal Lake. It was controlled by militants in 1996. I am telling you things were very difficult that time during during militants period. Same thing I am telling you about Danti Bada. It is it's very difficult because you see your. Uh, your people will be going the uh, uh, officials will be going inside that one and your uh, communication is required your police personnel will be they will be the targets definitely they will be the targets and they here they will they will and so they are sub target they will be absolutely sub targets so one and as such this elections definitely government will uh, plan accordingly because they will be done in phases looking into the security aspect and keeping communication in view and having more helipads and uh, definitely right. things will be done hmm. but uh, uh, coming back uh, to this case after say, after just having a visual of this uh, uh, of this site i can well tell you that uh, what has been done it is a big one big ied improvised explosive devices with pressure switch with pressure switch which they have done it and then they did it just to show their presence that they are still there they are not yet out from chatisgarh they are still controlling that area and they want to show a fear psychosis on the people that yes we are still there and we will will keep on uh, controlling the area as we were doing it earlier but i can well tell you that like uh, they are getting the intelligence they are getting the information better from the locals whether by pressure tactics than the police than the local police but uh, local people with hmm. fear they cannot give proper information proper intelligence cover to security forces and particular to cpf hmm. the intelligence cover can be done by the local police only 
what has happened in punjab punjab was covered punjab is a one the punjab terrorism was totally it was it was uh, looked into by the punjab police only in addition in support with crpf and bsf central paramilitary forces here okay. we had to take the lead because uh, uh, what you so told is basically sir you are saying that the center the center needs to take the lead over here is it certainly not i don't agree with you okay mana it is a state subject though right. they tell it law and order is our subject and so center is there with the naxalites okay I so sen center you. needs to <laughs> provide support they to the state government all those which they have at the moment sir i want to go across to i want to yes. go across to alok lal because uh we spoke about this uh, sometime back as well uh, mr alok lal that this uh, attack took place at the tri junction of uh, three states uh, which uh, of course gives an escape route as you were pointing out to the maoists now in that context how critical then the aspect of coordination becomes see there is no doubt that police is a state subject therefore each state has to handle its own baby however this particular operation needs to be conducted in three states which are adjoining and as we know in these three states we don't have government of the same party so that being the point i think government of india will have to supervise the coordination efforts while individual states will do their own thing i think coordination will have to be done by the government of india let us not forget that armed insurgency is the basic principle on which the maoists work and disinformation and propaganda against the existing government is their strategy so if that is so then the government of india has to come into the picture and show to these people hmm. that no this is not so the philosophy that you follow the ideological mismatch that you and i have it will have to be clearly spelled out and therefore the government of india has a role to play vikram singh uh, at the moment to send out the right signal especially because we are talking about an election year for chatisgarh uh, to send out the right signal also to the voters what is it that is immediately required to be done by the administration first of all is making an example by being able to nab those who carried out this dastardly attack the most important right now i would say that confidence building measures would be of paramount importance and the first point would be in the confidence building measure would be to arrest and account for those who are responsible for this attack number 2 to recover all the arsenal explosives and weapons with the naxalites number 3 to make the police presence felt and do area domination area domination does not come in a day it takes lot of blood toil sweat and tears to ensure area domination that yes people will go to the administration and the police and not to naxals for a dissel of the grievances unfortunately a corrupt administration a corrupt police system and something that a failed state kind of a syndrome would promote the naxal but if we give put the right foot forward i think all these problems can be addressed pk mishra is also conducting smooth elections one of the best hit backs at the maoists yes because we know that the election is coming and definitely to show their presence maoist will be doing this and this is their tactics always just to show their presence and they have shown their presence if they have shown their presence this is the time to hit them hit them hard hit them hard with all i mean all forces together you have to have combination of intelligence combination of information combination of all technology combination of logistics combination of uh, um, uh, all informations everything whether whether it is cpma whether it is the mac whether it is ib whether it is sib whether it is uh, um, irb whether, whether it is chatisgarh police all to see that who have done this where they can go we have to find it out it's not that difficult to find out like greyhounds they have done it so chatisgarh police has to come up to the expectation and with the help of cpma definitely central government is also a part of this on all all everything whether it is drones and satellites all coverage will be given to them and uh, we have to see that no such incident further should happen hmm. leakage will be there but we should not leave it to chances we have already we have to see from our we have to learn from our mistakes 
Absolutely. We have already done a lot of mistakes. We have to learn it. Let us not uh, allow it to happen again. Absolutely. And it's a big incident. Hmm. And I'm sorry for the loss of our 10 Javans. We don't want to lose more, but we have to take revenge and wipe out these Naxalites from Chhattisgarh, whether it is state government or what is central government, it is everybody's job. It's everybody's uh, job. Lal. All political okay. parties. Hmm. Alok Lal, what I want to also know from you is that it's very important to find out how the Naxals are able to amass the kind of explosives that they got specifically for this attack. Uh, how does uh, how does the yeah. uh, you know security forces go about doing that, and uh, how necessary is that as well? You have brought up a very important point. Who arms these people? Where do these explosives come from? Who are the people financing the, all these people? These are uh, matters which have got to be investigated deeply and completely. We have to know better than they know about us. Unfortunately, right now it seemed that they knew better than we did about them because mm. they managed to kill 10 of our very... Uh, brave Javans. And not to forget that these 10 Javans are all from the District Reserve Group Guard, uh, which is formed of the local Adivasis, the local tribals. So perhaps this is a signal to the other tribals not to join the effort of the state in dealing with the Naxals. This could be a message to all those who are planning to join. Maybe this move by the state government and by the government of India to get the local support of Adivasis in the efforts being made by the police forces. They want to make sure that more people do not join. So if this is so, then this can also be found out through hmm. uh, inquiries. Absolutely. So all these important points that have been raised here, certainly uh, this, uh, uh, of course, needs it both investigation and as was being pointed out by uh, Vikram Singh as well, uh, you require area domination. As the other panelists said, you require uh, to give a sense uh, of uh, to the locals that they are secure to go ahead with the democratic process of elections, which appears to be the target of the Maoists at the moment in the kind of messaging that they are trying to do. Many thanks to all our panelists for joining us here on this Thank discussion you. this evening. Let's move on now to our next discussion. Amidst the huge row surrounding Bonvita, the National Child's Rights Body has written to the manufacturer demanding a reply on the allegations that the chocolate-flavoured powder consumed by millions across the country contains harmful substances. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, that's NCPCR, has also asked uh, Mondelez India International, the uh, the country arm of the U.S. NAC's major to conduct a review and withdraw misleading advertisements and labels. The NCPCR has also written to the Food Safety and Standards Authority and the Central Consumer Protection Authority to take action against the companies that don't comply with guidelines on food safety of advertising. The big question is, how did this uh, so far uh, go unnoticed because this is a product that is related to children and one needs to be really careful about that. Uh, Dr. Shikha Sharma, nutritionist, is joining us here on the show now and the Lipcharian founder and consulting partner, Perfect Relations Image Guru is also with us. Dr. Shikha Sharma, coming first to you. When there is greater realization now that sugar in itself is so harmful and can be addictive in, in, in a sense for people, uh, how, how did this pass scrutiny that the sugar levels were excessive in this, uh, in a product that is being consumed by children and how harmful can it be? The first thing is that the guidelines continuously keep changing and uh, suppose if a guideline gives a cutoff of let's say uh, 32, so if someone has 31, in, technically they have passed the guideline. And these are the come up the some of the problems within the industry that they might uh, lobby and get a guideline uh, accepted in the in the name of uh, jobs or in the name of other things. But the reality is that today most pediatricians, most health professionals would actually condemn so much of sugar for anybody and most of all Absolutely. for kids, because in the case of children. It not only disrupts their biome, their gut bacteria, but it also is addictive. That means they, they, they are permanently resetting 
their taste buds for higher amounts of sugar. And these are the two critical things that their, their immunity is going down, their gut biome is affected, and they, they are falling into the sugar trap of addictions. Yes, that is exactly the point here, and I think that is why it's created so much of uh, uh, so much of uh, angst among parents as well, because they are certainly worried if they are trying to cut down on sugar consumption of their children, but uh, surreptitiously, if sugar intake does remain high for children through these products, it is a matter of concern. Dilip Cheren, how do products escape scrutiny over these basic fundamental issues? Uh, the onus, uh, you know, towards the consumer that uh, uh, these product manufacturers have, uh, shouldn't it be adhered to, especially in products that are consumed as food you items? Know, when, sorry. I think when there are, when there are uh, products consumed by children, we need to be doubly certain. Um, I did a kind of straw poll on Twitter recently to ask what was the reason for a large number of Indians being unhealthy. And the answer that came through resoundingly multiple times from, you know, several dozens of people was sugar. Now, the problem with guidelines, and I've sat on the ASCII uh, committee looking at these things, um, the advertising very often uh, allows companies to paper over the contents, uh, though those are printed, but the advertising does not mention it. Hmm. Secondly, the problem is that this is what I call disguised sugar. Under the guise of a health product, you're actually dispensing vast quantities of sugar to children. And parents who should know better get confused because the, uh, the attractiveness of the product as conveyed by the advertising may entices them to think that this is good for my child. They're doing it in, in, in uh, shall I say, with the best interest of the child at heart. But the fact is that today, children are being bombarded by sugar from a variety of sources across products. And disguised sugar is the most fundamental and most anxiety-causing input in many of these products. Hmm. Shikhar Sharma, Bonvita has in fact uh, put out a statement where they said that they would want to reinforce the fact that the formulation has been scientifically crafted by a team of nutritionists and food scientists to offer the best of taste and health and all our claims are verified is what they say and transparent. All regulatory approvals have been granted and what they specifically mentioned, which I think Dilip Cherin just mentioned, is that uh, they say that uh, the ingredients are all mentioned uh, on the pack for uh, the consumers to make informed choices. But a large number of, a large segment doesn't even read the uh, breakup of ingredients on products and they largely go uh, by the uh, advertisement or what is being claimed through ads. In that sense, Shikha Sharma, do you think that the onus really lies on that aspect, the aspect of advertising as well, and there should be a clampdown? I think uh, that's an excellent uh, observation. And if you see all the claims they have made, none, nowhere have they mentioned that our advertisement was correct. And which was, actually it was wrong. The, when they are claiming it's good for bone, it's good for this, it's good, uh, good for that. Mm. I mean, suppose, I mean, to, uh, to give an example, if I put a multivitamin in an alcohol bottle and start claiming that because it's a, I have put multivitamin, it's good for bones, it's good for calcium, and it's good for many other things, it is, it is, it is not making any sense hmm. because the amount of sugar in that uh, in that jar is already destroying the gut bacteria. It's already harming the intestine. It's already creating addictive behaviors. And, and that much of sugar is not even recommended by any pediatrician, any health uh, body. So if they're saying that we have all the regulatory approvals, the regulatory approval is creating a product. I mean, it could be ice cream. The ice cream would adhere to a regulatory product and say, okay, we are making an ice cream and we are putting so much sugar. So those are the regulatory approvals for creating a product. But when they're making health claims in an advertisement and saying that is good for bones, it's good for this, and even on the packaging, they put health claims. That's where I think a, a, a investigation should be done that basic basis, what research have they made that health claim? Hmm. Absolutely. Have they done a? Have they uh, taken uh, two thousand kids, given them this product, run a cohort, 
run scientific studies and then said yes it's good for bones so what i'm saying is that that product is not good for bones because of many other additives clearly i mean if you look at the uh, emulsifiers if you look at the flavor enhancers if you look at the other elements in that product they are unhealthy by all researches so if they pick up out of all the ingredients two ingredients and say it's great for health that is hiding the facts Absolutely, and Dilip Sharan, the problem here is also that uh, these are such big companies that uh, the social influencer, uh, influencer who put out uh, uh, this video early on, in fact, went uh, went ahead and then later apologized and took that video back. Under these circumstances, uh, how do you deal with uh, you know something as simple as we would think an ad that is put out? Now, many would say that you know ads are meant to uh, attract consumers to the product. but where is the moral and ethical responsibility here maha that's the real problem as shikha mentioned the company goes on to say and as you also mentioned in your uh, introduction that the company has taken every effort to make sure that the product is healthy and tasty it is the taste factor that i have a problem with government should lay down how much sugar is allowed a tablespoon of product and we are actually unleashing a tremendous crisis in our children and across generations the the fact is that getting around this is possible because product specifications is one thing but health claims are a total different thing mm-hmm. and influencers sometimes go go an extra step beyond what the company can say in fact that's why the crackdown has begun on influencers and whether they are like a shika sharma uh expert people who have an understanding of the gut biome of what it does or what sugar does in combination with emulsifiers many of these influencers don't have a clue they're not trained they don't have the technical skills and companies have the ability to tackle the soft underbelly of influence and marketing hmm. to get their product through so i think that this needs to be a a thing which government takes seriously hmm. and in fact i think we should have a tax on all products which have sugar above a certain limit hmm. and salt above a certain limit we're just allowing these things to happen hmm. and when there are easy ways around it which are obvious and staring us in the face Right, uh, Shikha Sharma and uh, Dilip Charan, both of you, many thanks for joining us here on this discussion. Clearly, uh, it is a welcome step at the moment that the NCPCR has taken by asking uh, for responses to all the claims that are now being made, claims and counterclaims rather. And one will have to wait to see. The report uh, is to be submitted next week. Once it is in, we'll get to know where the truth lies in this entire case. But at the moment, one thing is clear: sugar. and excessive sugar clearly is harmful a realization that needs uh, uh, in depth analysis more than that uh, a realization that needs to go down in the society so that the consumption of sugar can be reduced many thanks for watching breaking views